Hello, dear viewer, dear listener. My name is Mikuel Pelorino. I'll be coming to you once again with another wonderful uh, show, um, Robin Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. I have a um, I would say an unusual guest in the sense that uh, it's his first time um, in this sort of format. And uh, but he's, yeah, do I have an exact exciting guest for you? My guest's full name is Lucas Molele, uh, who has a degree in nursing science. But he's not come coming here to talk about nursing science. Can you introduce yourself to the viewer and tell them what we're going to discuss today? All right. Um, Thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given to me today. Mm. Uh, like you have said, my name is Lucas Malele and I come from a company called Retech Innovates. Retech? Retech Innovates. Yes. Yes. Retech Innovates is an ICT company that is doing ICT solutions. Mm. So I will be coming to talk about a product that we have uh, recently launched and it's exciting to share with the nation. Yeah, we're going to talk specifically about ICT in transport and logistics. Uh, first of all, explain to the viewer as an overview how ICT uh, impacts transport and logistics generally. All right. Um, we won't say much uh, as per the country's status as to how ICT has been integrated into our system, but uh, currently, as we see, you realize that. Uh, Controlling traffic congestion is it's a headache in Khabarone alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is because we are just relying on human capital. There has to be a policeman to, uh, controlling traffic and uh, all that. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's so quite the robots hard, so. become useless when it gets yeah. busy. Yeah. All right, let's go to, into it. We have a few points here 10 nuggets. What are the dynamics around consumerism and investment in the transport sector? Um, when we look in, in the greater city that is Kaboroni alone, we realize that there are more cars that are being registered almost every week, uh, giving mm. us an, an average of... They used to be called Hong Kongs, but I see that word has disappeared now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you would have at least 80 cars being registered per week. Mm -hmm. So that is a high consumer rate than we could have normally seen people investing in and all that, yes. Mm, so that is a, that's a big number, mm -hmm. yeah. So it causes, uh, it becomes a status cause of uh, this uprising congestions and all that. Mm -hmm. There must be a reason as to why people are buying cars than any other investment plans that are out there. Well, even in the CBD context, uh, what I learned is that you have to expect that everybody will have a car. If, for instance, a ministry is taking up a building like this, you've got to expect even the messenger and the clerk will have their Honda feet. Yeah. So the yeah. dynamics yeah. seem to have changed. Yeah. yeah. So the, the reason why it is like that is because we wouldn't want to waste a lot of time waiting for a transport that you don't know when it's going to arrive, where it's the way it is and all that. Mm. So perhaps if there could have been something convenient for the market, then definitely this couldn't be uh, a concern. Mm. We couldn't be why is there a high peak in consumerism? I think let's get to the heart of it. Why is there a high peak? P E A K peak. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, the the simple reason will be uh, people want it to be convenient. Mm. You would want to travel with convenience. You would want to save. You would want to have a reliable source of traveling from one point to another. So you wouldn't want to risk waiting for a taxi. Or Do you think when the government opened up the transport sector to make these Hong Kongs available, they should have anticipated the consequences of having? easy access to transportation or comparatively easy access. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. I think that's one thing that we overlooked and is now catching up with us. Okay. And uh, now let's look for solutions. What could be the solution to this particular problem in terms of uh, what the research you've done and your own uh, you know, professional advice, so to speak? Um, uh, I would say that um, already we have a transport system that is already in place, but then it seems like it's not serving the nation well because we still decide to go and buy extra cars even though there is a public transport. Mm -hmm. So this means that there is something wrong with our tra transport uh, services in terms of what is already in the field. So if we can have an integration of uh, ICT coming in and having more platforms that are going to allow people to give out their services, then definitely we can uh, care about 
the, the, pro the problem that you are already facing as a nation. What are the, what are the options? I want solutions. The solutions, mm. yes. Um, I'll talk about what my company is going to offer as a proposal, a proposed solution to this problem, mm. is that when we can have a, a ride-sharing platform where we allow different people to come in and uh, render their cars for service to help and uh, pick one another and all that, would have more cars available to help you travel wherever you want to go within the city and that you call it a ride sharing a ride sharing plan. platform is it a bit like uber it's more than uber explain um what in other words what will be the itc that will specifically help us that you have come up with i believe that this is part of this show is about you know promoting innovation yeah. promoting uh, individual uh, in, you know, individual talent and creativity. That's what we are about. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it's a right platform. What it does is that uh, we register a car and a driver into the system, mm. and then once the person has a profile in the system, we activate them and they will have a control app. Mm. So, as a user in the other end, I will have to just log in into my Facebook Messenger and then type hi. There will be an option that will ask you to request the right and then you, uh, you attach your, your current location to show us where are you and where would you want to go mm. and what type of a car would you want to, to use for that uh, this, uh, journey that you'd want to embark on. And then once you have stipulated all these requirements, then it will ask you for them, um, are you ready for this trip, accept it or uh, reject it. So if you accept the trip, we'll find, pick the nearest driver next to your pickup location and uh, the driver will also receive a notification in the application and the driver accepts your, your request. When the driver accepts your request, you will also receive as to who is coming, what type of a car they're driving, what is his name and how does he look like. Why do you say it's better than Uber? Because you don't need to have uh, a lot of technical things, you don't need to have, to have access to Wi-Fi. You just need your my social subscription mm. and you'll be able to work. Okay, and then at the end of the day, aren't these cars going to be going through the same traffic again when the traffic jam will continue or is there anything that tells you that it will be automatically improved? Uh, what we do is we, we look at the market, how many people are consumers of the services mm. and uh, once we reach a target number that we know is going to fully function uh, without anyone having to wait for a long time, then we are going to close the registration of a particular region. Mm -hmm. And then we open to a different region instead. So okay. if we decentralize our services from the city alone and make them available even in the outside areas, then definitely we are going to have a redistribution of assets. Okay. Uh, you call it Bitter Ride Platform? Yes. Call it Ride Platform in English, direct translation? Yes. Um, has this been tried in other countries or is it a totally new innovation? Uh, uh, this is a product that is, uh, has its origin in Botswana. Mm -hmm. And uh, Botswana is the first piloting uh, country that is going to have the benefits of the services. Okay. And we, we did intend to go abroad from here because mm -hmm. I think Africa needs it. Okay. Have you tried the folks at Innovation Hub to see whether they are interested? In assisting you? Um, at one point I did go there several times um, until there was an, uh, we had an encounter there where we were given false information. I think there was a scam or something mm. and uh, it just turned me off. I felt like I'm wasting my time. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I think you were unfortunate to meet somebody who was trying to, yeah. to derail you but I think the organization as a whole is a very reputable organization. Yeah. 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 You shouldn't yeah. give up on them. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm, I'm sure after this, mm. there's some somewhere somehow we're gonna relate very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, how does an average person, let's say a student or a worker, a nurse, you know, coming from the nursing profession, how do they benefit from this platform? Um, this platform actually everyone benefits mm. from just the minor student who is going to school every day. We are saying um, the standard car would actually charge you a bill of 23 within a 7 kilometer radius. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is to say that if I decide to order a car, 
mm. I can actually have four of my friends and then we just split the bill together. Mm -hmm. That is if I get a standard car. But then I also have an option of getting a Kombi or or even a seven seater or a luxury class or an executive class, depending on your budget. Well, explain to me how the, the you know, cost benefit advantage vis a vis taking a, a taxi special. Uh -huh. um, the problem with uh, what you are seeing today is that we have taxis and there are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they are congested within the city center at the taxi uh, stop, mm -hmm. the taxi rank and all that. They are not in the, in the taxi stops. In fact, so, after certain hours, they don't go outside. Yeah, yeah. Outside in the outskirts. Yes. So that brings uh, a frustration to the user at the end of the day. So what Beta Ride will be doing is, is to say that okay, we would have our hotspot areas where we know this is a place where there is a lot of people, mm -hmm. and we will be letting our drivers know of this hotspot. They will be driving towards those hotspots for a pickup. Mm -hmm. So we'll be knowing what okay when I'm driving towards this direction. Definitely, I'm going to have a pickup. Do you already have an infrastructure in place, or it's still at a very formative stage? Um, actually, we are talking about a live product. It is already there. It is mm -hmm. functional, and uh, we do have a website. It's called bitaride.com. You can just visit it and see. Bitaride. Bitaride.com. Can you just spell it nicely? B i t s a. Okay. Bitaride. Yeah. Bitaride. So is it com. easily accessible? Very much accessible. And it costs nothing. It costs nothing. And why do you say you don't need to have Wi-Fi if it's on you? Um, help, help some of us who are pre-millennial <laughs> to understand. <laughs> uh, we've realized something about our uh, African context. Mm. We, we are Africans where we don't get everything on a silver platter. To have internet just to begin with, it's, it's, it's a liability. It's, mm. not, it's not a privilege. Mm. So you can't have a product that is based on our internet while we, all of us here, we have a network that we are belonging to and they're giving us free services in terms of subscriptions which are very much affordable. Mm -hmm. So if, if at all there's an innovation that is to cater for African setup, it should be an innovation that uses what is already there. Mm -hmm. And we are saying with our 2G our connectivity all the way up, we should be able to have a platform that is functional at all levels. Okay. When you say it's already live, how many vehicles are available in the system? Um, as we speak, we have more than 40 drivers we have enrolled. 40 drivers? Yes, we have already enrolled. And uh, it's just a matter of opening them up and uh, they will be delivering the services. And uh, what, what is the launch date? What is the, the official launch the of official. where you now go viral and tell everybody? Um, it won't be any time uh, soon. But we also promise that it won't take long. Okay. I think in a month or two we should be up. I've seen in these uh, shows when people are pitching, the most important question is proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So has there actually been a proof of concept? Or this is one of those innovation, innovations where we just have to plunge in <laughs> and find out? No, definitely it has been tested. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a product that has been was launched on the 7th of January. This year? Yes, this year. Oh, okay. And uh, because the silence is not because it wasn't it wasn't operational. Mm -hmm. We are actually test driving it. Mm -hmm. We had to have different drivers coming in from different uh, backgrounds who were not even part of the development. Mm -hmm. And then we just wanted to see how are they going to relate and interact with the system. And so far, they're making it an ending. They're making? An ending out of okay. it. Yes. And do you normally screen your drivers for things like criminal records and past experiences? Yes, yes. Uh, that is the most important part. Mm. You won't be a driver if you are not uh, a responsible citizen. Mm -hmm. So we'd want to see your police clearance, we'd want to see your valid driver's license, we'd want to see the road width of the car. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only that, your car should also pass our test because you also want to examine it to see how worthless it is. You wouldn't want to risk the lives of... How does one become a, a, a beta ride host, so to speak? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, mm. uh, the first thing that you would do for you to be a driver, we do have an, uh, an app in the Google Play Store. So you just type beta driver. There will be an application, an app there. Mm. You can download it and install it in your phone. It has uh, 19 MB memory-wise, mm -hmm. so it's very... It's very much portable. Uh, once we have that app, then you just go to your Facebook Messenger, you type um, 
registered driver. Once you say registered driver, the system will automatically ask you relevant questions. Then it just provides us with the details as to who are you, uh, your car, what car line, all that. And then you will also get a confirmation later on to say that your request has been submitted, wait for the response. And who qualifies to become a beta ride driver? Um, beta is open to everyone. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have a car and you are willing to share it, then you are very much welcome to this platform. Okay. All right. We've covered the 10 key points, the 10 nuggets I wanted us to touch on. But I want to ask you something else. Okay. How do you overcome the initial resistance or the general resistance that we have as Batswana to something that is homegrown, to mm -hmm. something that is started by Motswana. I know you, you'll you agree with me that there's generally a bias against yeah. Yeah. homegrown things. Yeah. In fact, there's almost a suspicion if a Motswana tries to do something, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, I think it's unfortunate. Yeah, be, yeah, yeah. Uh, the most important thing that we all are aware of as a nation, as the youth in particular, is that there's a high rate of unemployment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are saying to everyone out there to say that, you know what, you don't need to wait for someone to review your CV in order for you to start making an enemy. Mm -hmm. So if you do have uh, access to resources, that, that is a car, is that you can actually ask someone to borrow you a car and then you start making extra money for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because what you are saying is with this platform, we can have more than a good number, at least uh, in, just in the city, we can have at least 10,000 drivers. Mm -hmm. That is 10,000 people who are being employed to at least help us to move from one point to another. And you're talking about a population of 250 plus mm -hmm. in Khaboroni alone. Is there any resistance from the taxi association? Um, <laughs> the resistance is always there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is always there. Because I agree, you would go to a, a taxi mall, then you'll find that there's this person is controlling the taxis and he's calling them one by one. Mm -hmm. And the taxis are queuing. Mm. For, for the next four clients while they could be out there uh, saving the nation. So unfortunately, we ourselves are the ones who are causing this headache to this transport industry. So you welcome taxi drivers and uh, also? Those are our, our priority. Mm. Uh, that is the cab industry, the taxi industry, the combi industry, all this public transport, they can now well much well welcome into this. In terms of road worthiness, how, how do you make sure that you don't out up with uh, Skorokoro or somehow in the system? Uh, we want a valid road worthy certificate. Certificate, yes. Okay. You'd have to go first to transport and ask to do a road worthy test. Mm. You come with that certificate to us because you'd also want to verify if, if indeed your car is worthy. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to also take you through a test with that very particular car that you have registered. Okay. Yeah. Currently, where is the company based? Where does one go to enroll with you or to inter to interact with your services? Um, what we do is that once the driver has enrolled, we we, we schedule for orientations. Mm. So we have a class where we just orientate all the drivers how the system works, what is. What, are, what is expected of them to do each time they interact with the system. Okay. So we would, would give out information to say that this is where we are meeting and mm -hmm. this time, please make sure that you are there. So what would be the biggest takeaway that you want the listener or the viewer to go away with uh, as we part? Um, it's a right doesn't only offer you a solution as to your traveling. It also gives you uh, safety. That is. If you go into any car that you are taking, maybe from here I want to go to bus rank, I'll just wait by the taxi stop and then get a taxi, a random taxi that I don't even know the driver, I don't even know the registration plate, and I do have my valuables, maybe a, a laptop or something, mm. and I'm also stressed about my day. And unfortunately, I leave my, my asset behind, and I don't even know who am I going to look for. So it makes me wonder whether when you say that whether there's an insurance component, whether you are insured? As, as a company? Yes, as a company, as, uh, you know, if somebody's laptop disappears in your one of your cars, for instance. Yes, this is what happens. Uh, once you are within the system, we you have a record in your messenger account. Mm -hmm. That information stays with you. You know who picked you up at what time. But then if you still fail to say that, uh, 
maybe the driver is not cooperating with you, you can also call the customer center and tell us what a, you had uh, one of our services and this is what happened. We also do have a record to track our drivers as to see how did they uh, interact with the, with the client and we can also give you a validation to say that indeed this is the person that should be accountable. Mm -hmm. Look into the camera and share with the viewer how they can access you on what platforms you're available. Yes, we are available on uh, Google Play Store. We do have our driver's app. You can download it. It's free. It's accessible. And then we also do have a Facebook page. It's called Pizza Ride. Pizza Ride, unfortunately, is not like just a normal page on Facebook. It's actually a system. Uh, when you type a message, just say hi or say taxi or say a cab. If you say a word that is not within those lines or you just uh, say, uh, you type an image or something, the system won't respond well to you to say what did you say or something. Uh, but this, this is an intelligent system where we are saying, go into the platform, say hi, you can request a ride, or you can choose to call us uh, in, the, in that very same platform. We'll be able to get our number that you can call the customer center. And you can also choose to see how does the system work. If you're not confident with the, um, the, the clip that you have given already in the system as to how do you do your booking. But then if you also want to register on the same platform, you just type register driver and you follow the procedure and you'll be glad to save you well. What are the contact numbers and the contact details? Uh, the call customer center, they, you can contact us on 7460-9984. That's a mass call number. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also choose to call us on 7485-9195. That is our orange number. We are okay. always ready to answer you. Okay. Now, would you do me a favor and look at the camera and encourage the viewer to subscribe to Mohobi Nuggets of Wisdom podcast? Um, to everyone who is looking and watching this at home, uh, what I can say, this is a very wonderful opportunity, especially to a startup uh, company just like me. Uh, it's a privilege to actually have him host me at this platform. And uh, it's easy. You just have to come to CBD and you have to see the man. Mm. Then he will be up and uh, you will have access to his client who are, who are faithful followers. And you too can make a contribution. Ask them to course. subscribe. And yes, <laughs> we do subscribe. Yeah. It's very important. Thank you very much, Ramulele. Thank you uh, for taking your time out. Um, if we had more time, I would be asking you, how did you move from nursing to ICT? Just out of interest, why did you go from your original profession to uh, information technology? Um, mine, it wasn't an easy story to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was doing my final year in the University of Botswana, um, it was unfortunate I had severe migraines that caused me to pull out of school. Mm -hmm. And at the, ti at the same time, I was also running a small cab company. So I was like, okay, I had dreams about the cab company. And uh, this is the dream that I'm sharing with the nation today. Mm -hmm. So as to why did I have to drift from nursing to where I am today, it is because of the entrepreneurship passion that I have. I just want to help the nation. Thank you. Keep keep on keeping on with that passion. Thank you very much for being our guest. My pleasure. Uh -huh.